Some of you are going to know enough algebra to just see the answer right away. And I'm kind of okay with that. This is a clear case where we need to factor. You can probably tell just by the fact that we have these like double uh, sets of parentheses in the answer choices. You've probably done this in school already where you want to split something with some squares into smaller pieces, into two terms. And so we're looking to do that here. But basically, this is a weird kind of factoring known as dots, difference of two squares. So the formula for that is we split that by taking kind of the square root of each piece. So the square root of x squared is x, the square root of 100y squared is 10y, and then one of these is a plus, one of these is a minus. So I wrote it backwards, but that's kind of what we have right here. And so the 17 is just going to hang out front. It doesn't really matter. So that is just one way to get it is uh, just know this kind of factoring. It is something the SAT likes because they know everyone learns it, but then forgets it because it's not really like the most common type of factoring. There's very special cases where it works. So uh, they're counting on you to have forgotten it. Now, if you did, we have some other options. We could go to Desmos and we could type uh, this in. It's going to give us some curve and then we can compare that to all the other choices. And since these are supposed to be equivalent, we would hopefully get an equivalent curve for the right answer. But I'm gonna show you another way. I think this is gonna work. We can also arithmetize here. At no point do they ask me to solve for X or solve for Y. So I could do something very lazy and say X is one and Y is one meaning that 17 x squared minus 100 y squared is really 17 times one squared minus 100 times one squared. So this isn't really that hard because we pick one, this is one minus 100, so that's 17 times negative 99. Now I could go to the calculator and just turn that into one number, and I guess I will because that's normally how I do it. So 17 times negative 99 is negative 1683. So I am looking for an answer choice that gives me that when I plug one in for X and Y. So if I didn't know the answer, I would just go down the line here. So this is 17 times one minus two times one minus 50. So that's 17 times negative one times negative 49. So I don't think that's gonna work. Uh, 17 times negative one times negative 49 is 833. And if I did the same thing here, so that's because it's a different number, it doesn't work, right? So 17 times one minus two times one plus 50. So that's gonna be 17 times negative one times 51. And the same thing, I kind of really want that 17 to be times 99. So I don't think this is gonna work again. 17 times 51 is negative 867, different number. So 17 times one minus 10, so one minus 10 is, uh, I'll just show you, one minus 10, one minus 10. So already I can see the problem here is that I'm gonna have the wrong sign. This is negative nine times negative nine. So those two negatives are gonna make a positive, but I want a negative number. So if I did the same thing with D, 17 times one minus 10, so that's negative nine, one plus 10 is 11. 17 times negative nine times 11 is negative 1683, exactly what I wanted. So yeah, arithmetize works. It's definitely more time consuming here, but if you have more time and you need to you know, spend it making sure you got it right and you weren't sure if your difference of two squares factoring was correct, if you were remembering the rules correctly, then arithmetize is a good backup plan. It's a way to spend that extra time checking it in a way that's different than the way you did it originally. Um, and like I said, we could go to Desmos here and type them in, but I'm not gonna waste your time with that. I do think it's very important to know how to arithmetize and even if you don't do it for this question, to recognize that arithmetize could work here because we are not asked to solve for X and Y, they are just placeholders. We can make up any number we want. I chose one because I just felt that would be easier, but we could have chosen maybe some zeros, maybe some other numbers. We had a lot of options, but no matter what, it should get us one right answer eventually.